Nobody has a favorite. Turn to a random page in the black book. Let's sing a song. 404. Okay, Judy has a favorite. In what book? In the red book. 404 in the red hymnal. of July, so it was unfair to ask him to do a sermon and all that other stuff. He's moving down from Connecticut, and that's what the conference really asks anyway. But I would like to have a coffee hour following the service on the 9th of July, so if people could bring something in so that we could welcome him and greet him after the service, that would be great. And we're going to move communion to the 9th of July as well. We will not have communion on the 2nd. So um, just so everybody's aware, communion on the 9th, order of welcome for a new pastor, and a coffee hour, although our new pastor will be here next week and you can meet him, but he will not be preaching. Thank you. Are there any other announcements? If you haven't got your money for the trip, give it to me, or at least give me your, your uh, paper that tells me you're coming, because we're just on the verge of not going. So we need a, we need a few more people to, to come. Okay. Any other announcements? Okay. okay, please stand as you are able and join me in the responsive call to worship found in the front of your bulletin. In the name of love, we have come. In the name of love, we are here. And in the name of love, we will go. Knowing in our hearts and in our souls that what we have experienced is truly divine. Please remain standing and turn to him 111 in the red hymnal, and we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4 of How Can We Name a Love?
join me in the opening prayer found in your bulletin. Let us pray. Bless us, us with Lord, love, O merciful, merciful God, that we may love as you love, that we may show patience, tolerance, kindness, caring, and love to all. Give me knowledge, O giver of knowledge, that I may be one with my universe and Mother Earth. O compassionate one, grant compassion unto us, that we may help all fellow souls in need. Bless us with your love, O God. Bless us with your love. Please turn to hymn 451 in the red hymnal, and we will sing, Be Thou My Vision. of love, justice, and reconciliation in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, in all responsible use of the earth's resources. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, by silence or action, through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith, through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology, which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We commit ourselves, individually and as a community, to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please turn in the red hymnal to number 572 and we will sing, Pass It On. Although we usually sing this at the candlelight service on Christmas Eve, 
It is about spreading God's love all the time. So we wanted to thank her as well with our love offering for all the extra time she's been putting in. 
Subjected to prejudice, denied opportunities, excluded, pushed to margins. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for all those who are betrayed, who don't know loyalty, who fear to trust or to love, and who don't realize that they are already loved by you. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the landless and homeless, the refugee and evicted, those who find themselves in foreign places and strange places. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the overworked and the underpaid, for those in dangerous work and those in compassionate work, for those who long to work but are denied the opportunity. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the church, for all the branches of the vine, including this one we gather as part of today. Body of Christ, people of Christ, for whom the Lord our, our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. Our prayer today is for the creation gifts, this earth in all its mighty wonder, yet tender fragility, the gifts of life and resources to treasure. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. The Lord our God is one. We will love with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for Evelyn Kraft, Phyllis Fife, Tammy Tomer, Traveling Mercies, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now let us pray with the words that Jesus taught us say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We've come to the portion of our service where you can support this ministry by giving as you are able. You can give by putting the offering in the plate, or you can give online using PayPal, or going to the website giving page, or dropping it off in the mail slot, or mailing it in. The ushers may now come forward. As the ushers take up the collection, please turn in the red hymnal to number 349, and we will sing, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus.
Please remain standing as we say our offertory prayer together. Generous God, Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, at your table we present this money, symbol of the work you have given us to do. Use it, use us, in the service of your world, to the glory of your name. Amen. You may be seated. Please turn to hymn 601 in the red hymnal, and we will sing, Thy word is a lamp through twice.
When I was in my 20s, I attended a church that sang scripture songs uh, from the King James Version of the Bible. One scripture that I loved was 1 John 4, 7, and 8. And it went so, kind of like this. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. So, beloved, let us love one another. First John 4, 7 and 8. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said sort of like this. <laughs> Let's break this down a little further. In the New Interpreter's Study Bible, it says, To know God means to be in a right relationship with God which leads to an obedient life. Claiming such a relationship with God, but disobeying betrays a lie and aligns with evil. Divine love is a concrete act of sending Christ, and so is Christian love. God's love evokes our love, and not the other way around. So the divine love is both a model for how to love, and a power that enables love. In our reading this morning, verses 19 and 20 tells us, We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, cannot love God whom they have not seen. This repeats the statement in verse 10, And this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. With the addition of the label liar, the liars are those who fail to love others while deceiving themselves into thinking that they love God. Mark 12, 30-31 connects love in God with loving others. It says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. In John 13, verses 34 to 35, it tells us, I give you a new commandment, that, love one, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 8, tells us more about love. If I speak in the tongues of humans and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. As if I have, and if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body, so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious, or boastful, or arrogant, or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no record of wrongs. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. David Gushy, senior columnist for Baptist New Global, wrote in an article, Christianity Without Love, that a fellow pastor, Zach Lambert in Austin, Texas, tweeted a quote of Mr. Gushy's from his book, Changing Our Mind. And although there was much support for this pastor's followers, the pushback from other Christians was rabid. The quote was, Better is one day in the company of those bullied by Christians, but loved by Jesus, than thousands in the company of those wielding scripture to harm the weak and defenseless. Mr. Gushy wrote, It's not so much the disagreement, hey, I'm used to disagreement, it's the hatefulness, the snarling spirit, the macho posturing, the aggressiveness that is so shocking. I gather that such feedback is part of Zach's daily bread. I am grateful it is not generally part of mine. Mr. Gushy continued, 
Jack is a Zach is a generation younger than I am. His Twitter feed is full of this kind of Christian vitriol. He does not appear to be surprised any longer. But I am still surprised because I thought Christianity had certain guardrails. But then, of course, it struck me. What would this religious tradition called Christianity look like if its adherents were no longer taught the centrality of love? What if they were being discipled into a different ethic, a different vision of what it means to be a Christian? What would Christianity without love look like if believers had been fed a loveless version of Christianity for a generation or more? It would look like the comments on Zach's feeds and a hundred other feeds. It would look like the kind of toxic, toxic masculinity Christianity described by author Kirsten Cobes Dumais in the book Jesus and John Wayne, a, sw a sweeping revisionist history of the last 75 years of white evangelism, have a problem with that word, evangelicalism, revealing how evangelicals have worked to replace the Jesus of the Gospels with an idol of a rugged masculinity and Christian nationalism. Or in the words of one modern chaplain, a spiritual badass. It would look like tribalist, reactionary, authoritarian, angry, loveless men lacquering Christianity over their resentments and aiming dead end on at the scapegoats of the moment. It would look like a movement discipled not by Jesus, but by false gods, idols. Christianity without love is the negation of what Jesus proclaimed and demonstrated. Christianity without love is a violation of the Spirit of God. Christianity without love is worse than useless. It is actively dangerous. Mr. Gushy concluded with, I ask today's Christian preachers, teachers, and parents whether you are teaching the religion that Jesus taught or if you are actively, explicitly, oh, and if you are actively, explicitly, urgently resisting this unholy other thing. There is no hiding from this one. Too much is at stake. Ministry Matters, which is a website I use to do research things, uh, presents this teaching. God's nature is love. God's actions intend to restore humanity and all of creation to a flourishing life of right relationship with God and each other. And the role of human persons, as those created in God's image, is to love God and others in a way that reflects God's own character and allow for mutual flourishing. In conclusion, I would like to leave you with this scripture from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 2. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and in, of one mind. Please stand as you are able, and we will sing, They'll Know We Are Christians by Our Love, Hymn 2223 in the Black Hymnal.
closing prayer found in your bulletin. Lord, Lord make, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where, where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much see to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. The service has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.